but in uh, the uh, Acts chapter 20, and beginning in verse number 13, and we went before the ship and sailed into Assos, there intending to take in Paul, for so had he appointed, minding himself to go afoot. When he met with, the, with us at, at Assos, we took him in and came to Mytilene. We sailed thence and came the next day over against Chios, and the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried at Trogillium, and the next day we came to Miletus, where Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jer Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. How I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you, and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the uh, 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 testifying uh, both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, uh, uh, not knowing. Uh, uh, the things that shall befall me there say that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to re record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock, also of your own selves, shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that for the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. And that's reading down through verse number 32. If you'd bow your head, we'd ask God's blessing on the word. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, we thank you for this privilege that we have once again to be in your house. Thank you so much for the wonderful Sunday school this morning. God, for the good choir singing, individual singing this morning. What a blessing. I thank you so much, Lord. God, that I, that I was able to be kept off the rocks by that wonderful lighthouse. I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Oh, God, I pray this morning, Lord, that you would bless me, your servant. Strengthen me, Lord. Help me this morning. Father God, bless your people, Lord. And Lord, would you lay your hand upon me and give me the unction this morning, Father, wisdom and knowledge and understanding in your word and the words that you'd have me to say that would be a blessing to these wonderful people. God of Lewis Lane, Central Baptist Church, thank you so much for the privilege, God, that you've given me to be their pastor. Lord God, for the privilege of standing behind this sacred desk, though I be not worthy. Oh God, I pray you just have your good will and way this morning. And whatever you do, we'll thank you. We'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for it all because you're worthy. In Jesus' sweet and holy name, amen and amen. I want to say that Again, we thank the Lord for the privilege of being here. And I'd like to take this passage of Scripture and uh, use Paul as an example of the things that he reminded the, the, these Ephesian elders of that he had done, beloved. And, 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 and taking Paul as an example, I try to preach a message uh, this morning on the subject of leaving a good record. Amen. 
You know, beloved, I, 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 I'd love to be able, when I come down to the end of the way, I'd love to be able to leave a, a, a good deal of money to my children and property. And, but it, well, according to the way things look, I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to. And there's probably not going to be much that I'm going to leave behind other than that house up there on Timber Tree Branch when I leave this walk of life. They may be a little bit of money, but not too much beyond that. But, uh, 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 you know, uh, beloved, the, the greatest thing that I want to leave my children is I want to leave behind a good record so that they will know that their dad, their, their, and, and, and I know that my wife feels the same way, that they would know that dad and mom lived for the Lord Jesus Christ and, and that, that we tried to be an example to them, though we're not perfect, certainly. As Brother Cecil pointed out in Sunday school this morning, we all sin and, and come short of the glory of God. There's not one of us that are perfect. There's not one of us, my beloved. I believe we're supposed to strive for that perfection. I believe we're supposed to try every day to live our lives in the light of this gospel truth. Do you know, the, uh, you know I'd like for people to be able to remember me as a, as a person that was friendly, as a good friend and, and a good neighbor and all, all those things like that. But the greatest thing that we can have and the greatest record that we can have is that we live for the Lord. Amen. I'd like to be remembered as a good Christian. I'd like to be remembered. I know that I'm not going to be uh, uh, remembered up there with, uh, with other uh, great men, uh, certainly ones that are known worldwide or nationwide or anything like that, but not even those that, are, that have been recognized and known locally as great men, like Brother Pat and Brother Kenny and Brother J.W. DePew and and uh, 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 Brother Henry McCann and, and, and different ones and, and Brother Don that just passed away here in the last few days. But thanks be unto God, amen, I, I, I trust Him that I'll be able to leave behind a record of, amen, that I stood for the truth and that I did my best to preach the Word of God to people as they were. And I want you to notice in verse number 18, in verse number 19, first of all, he said, he tells them in verse number 18, when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know that from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner of I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. Amen. He, he told them, he said, I want you to remember that as long as I was with you, I did my best, to, amen, to serve the Lord. That's the greatest thing that you and I can leave behind. That's what we're supposed to do, my beloved. Amen, that's what we're commanded to do, to serve Him. We're not supposed to serve man. We're not supposed to serve flesh. We're not supposed, my beloved, to serve religion or denomination or anything like that. But, beloved friend, we're supposed to... Amen, to serve the Lord. The Bible tells us in, in Psalm chapter 2, uh, verses 11 and 12, he said, Serve the Lord with fear <clears throat> and rejoice with trembling and kiss the Son, lest he be angry uh, and you perish from the way. I want to tell you, my beloved friend, there's a reward for those uh, that live for the Lord. Thank God. Uh, amen, it's that wonderful city that Brother uh, uh, Cecil was teaching about and talking about so wonderfully this morning. Uh, amen. In the meantime, before that city comes down, uh, amen, before the, the, uh, that Christ comes back, uh, amen, and catches away his bride, uh, amen, before, my beloved friend, uh, amen, the, uh, the uh, uh, great tribulation period, uh, and before, my beloved, uh, amen, the thousand year reign of Christ upon the earth, uh, and before the final battle of, of Gog and Magog, and the destruction my beloved, uh, amen, uh, uh, of this old earth, my beloved, uh, uh, when it will be burnt up by fire, uh, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, uh, and God shall create new heavens uh, and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Uh, my beloved friend, in the meantime, uh, amen, to be absent from the body uh, is to be present with the Lord. Uh, but in the meantime, Jesus has commanded us, uh, amen, that we occupy till he come. That is, that we 
live for Him and we do for Him, that we serve Him, my beloved, while we're down here, my beloved. And the Bible tells us, amen, we find the record in Mark chapter 12, amen, verses 28 through 31, and then it's recorded also in Matthew's gospel, amen, that one of the scribes came and asked Him, which is the first and great commandment of all? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Amen, hear, O Israel, how the Lord thy God is one Lord. How therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Amen, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and him only shalt thou serve. I thank God, my beloved, we're supposed to, amen, to serve him. And I want to leave behind, don't you? Amen, a record that I serve the Lord. I thank God. Well, I'm thinking about my beloved friend of how that the Bible tells us, amen, in Hebrews 11 and 5, that by faith Enoch was translated how that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony, amen, that he pleased the Lord. I thank God I want to leave behind, amen, a testimony that I please the Lord. It's not enough, my beloved friend, amen, that I declare it with my lips. But I want to leave something behind, my beloved, amen, that others can see and they can know that I've been saved by the grace of God. Not that I'm some great man or some great preacher or anything like that, but I, I would love for them to remember me and to say, I know that that man was a Christian because I could see Christ in his life. That's what I desire. Amen, don't you? And oh, I want to tell you, God's keeping a record book. Amen, for the, of those that are living for him. Oh, listen, Job said in Job 16, 19, I thank God, he said, my witness is in heaven and my record is on high. I want to tell you, God's keeping a record, my beloved friend. Amen, the world may not know what you're doing, my beloved. Amen, a lot what you do. And my beloved friend, there's some things that God really don't want anybody to know. Amen what you do. Amen. He told, tells us in the word of God, our Lord said, when you give alms, I said, don't let, don't let your right hand or your left hand know what your right hand's doing. He said, but when thou doest thine alms, amen, do thine alms in secret. Amen. That thy Lord, which seeth in secret, I may reward thee openly. Now, but thank God there's other things that he wants you and I to do in front of others. Amen. He wants us to walk down here my beloved so that we're an example of amen to our children and our grandchildren amen to our brothers and our sisters amen to husbands and wives amen to friends and neighbors amen and strangers out there how that we meet somewhere along the way now that's why I declare let your light so shine before me that they may see your good words and glorify your father which he is in heaven and Paul reminded those Ephesians elders uh, when they came to see him. Uh, he said, I walk before you. Uh, amen. In the land of the word of truth. Uh, amen. You saw that I was serving God. Uh, amen. You saw me do uh, what God uh, amen told me to do. Thank God. Uh, and he left behind a record. Uh, amen. He told them, buddy, friend, later down on this, uh, in this chapter, uh, he said, I know uh, that you among whom I've gone preaching, uh, that you will see how my face no more. Amen. But Paul I wanted to have a record my beloved and remind them of the record how that he left behind that he served the Lord. Not only that my beloved friend I want to look at verse 20 verse 27. There's several other verses I could look at but I had to pare it down. I had about four or five. I had to pare it down to just a couple Amen. Verse number 20, he said, And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Amen. Thank God. In verse number 27, he said, Amen. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He said, I've not kept anything back from you, but he said, I've declared unto you, Amen, the whole counsel of God. He said, I've 
I've not just told you what would make you feel good. Amen. I've not just told you, amen, that, that would strike, uh, which would uh, stroke your flesh. But he said, I told you what you liked. And he said, I told you what you didn't like. He said, I preached unto you all. Amen. The counsel of God, thank God. I want to tell you, I want to live behind the record of my beloved friend that I stood for right and that I stood for truth. Amen. Whether my family likes it. Amen. Whether my neighbors like it. Amen. Whether the world likes it. Amen. Or whether they don't. Amen. We need to stand for truth, my beloved friend. Yes, he, he left a record, my beloved. Amen. That he had stood for God. He had declared of the whole counsel of God. Oh, listen, beloved friend, that 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Amen. Paul wrote that young preacher, Timothy, and said, Preach the word. I be instant in season, out of season. I reprove, rebuke, and exhort. I with all long suffering and doctrine. Amen. What a blessing that is. Well, I want to tell you, honey, we're supposed to preach the word. Amen. This church is a local New Testament body. Amen. We are supposed to teach. And we are supposed to preach the Word of God. Amen. We are supposed to see to it. Amen. That the Word of God gets out there in that world. And that others will know. Amen. That we stand for truth. And we stand for right. What a blessing that is. I want to tell you that ain't just for the preacher to do. That ain't just for the Sunday school teacher to do. Amen. But it's for all of us to do. Amen. As we quoted you there a while ago, he said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Amen. Which is in heaven. But he tells us in 1 Peter 1 and 15, he said, Sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is within you. Amen. Each and every one of us, my beloved, have a duty and an obligation as God gives us opportunity and opens us doors of opportunity. I thank God that we walk through those doors and we witness to somebody and testify to somebody. Amen. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I want to tell you, I'm, I'm retired like a lot of you are. And I know we spend a lot of time at home and we're not out in the public as much as we used to be. But oh, I still believe that somewhere along the way, amen, God will give us a chance. Maybe, amen, it might be some uh, uh, chance meeting or seem like chance to us. Uh, amen, my beloved friend, with somebody you've not seen in a long time, uh, as somebody maybe you used to know, uh, amen, maybe you run into one of your neighbors and start a conversation. Uh, and maybe, my beloved friend, you strike up a conversation uh, uh, with somebody in a doctor's office or a dentist's office uh, or something like that. Uh, and God gives the opportunity, amen, to witness to somebody and testify the grace of God. We need to take it, thank God, and we need to tell others about Jesus. What a blessing that is. And Paul said, I kept back nothing, but I declared the whole counsel of God. As I said, my beloved friend, it's not just my duty. Amen. It's not just the pastor's duty. Amen. It's not just the evangelist's duty. Amen. It's not just the Sunday school teacher's duty. But it's the duty of the whole church. Amen. Every child of God that we get out the message and that Jesus saves today. What a blessing that is. Oh, listen, my beloved friend, Acts 1 and 8, Jesus said, Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses of me, at first in Jerusalem, and then in Judea, and then in Samaria, and then in the uttermost, amen, part of the earth, thank God. We're to be witnesses for him. What did he tell us? Matthew 28, amen, the Great Commission. He said, go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and teaching them to do all things. Amen. Whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always. I want to tell you, honey, if you try, amen, to witness a little bit for God, amen, God will be with you. Thank God. Somebody might say, preacher, I just can't remember much scripture. I'm not very good. Remembering the Bible, amen, you can tell them what Jesus did for you, can't you? 
Amen. I'm here to tell you, my beloved friend, every child of God, amen, knows enough, amen, to share Jesus with somebody else. We all do. Oh, I want to tell you, amen, Paul said, I kept back nothing, but he said, I declared the whole counsel of God. Look at verse 29 through verse number 31. It turns to a serious subject here. Now, don't misunderstand me sharing Christ with somebody and telling somebody about the Lord. Amen. That's serious. Amen. We need to do it. But oh, listen, my beloved friend. I want you to notice here. Amen. What he said in verse 29 through 31. Uh, he, he tells us here. He said, For I know this, uh, that after I, my departing, uh, I shall grievous wolves enter in among you, uh, and not sparing the flock. Uh, also of your own selves shall men arise. Uh, I speaking perverse things to draw away disciples uh, after them. Therefore watch and remember that for the space of three years I cease not uh, to warn everyone uh, night and day uh, uh, with tears. Uh, I want to tell you he said, Beloved, uh, hey man, I didn't fail. To, I'm warning you. Uh, I haven't failed to warn you. Uh, and I'm warning you uh, about false prophets. Uh, and you need to stand against them. Amen. Well, I want to tell you, my beloved friend, I want my record when I'm gone. As I said, to say that I stood for the truth. Uh, and against heresy, and against error, and against lies, my beloved friend, amen, of the devil. I want people to know, amen, that I preach the truth, and nothing but the truth, my beloved, amen, what a blessing that is. We're going to have to stand against it, my beloved friend, that's part of our duty, and part of our responsibility that we speak out against that that's not right. In the sight of the Lord, my beloved. Amen. Our Lord tells us in Mark, in Mark, in Matthew, rather, 7 and 15. He said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Amen. Not every man, my beloved friend, that wears a suit and carries a Bible, amen, behind the podium, my beloved, is of God. Not every man, my beloved friend, that stands and preaches and calls himself a minister of Christ, my beloved friend, not everyone is true and genuine. There's many false prophets in the day and age that we're living in and we need to stand against it. Now, I want to tell you, honey, as many as Paul was worried about in his day, it's magnified multitude millions more in the day and age that we're living in. And it seems like that when you stand for right and when you stand for truth and when you st preach the Word of God and teach the Word of God, as it is to men as they are, now the vast majority, amen, don't want to receive it this morning. You let some man stand up and they say some of the craziest things in the world. They'll go running after it, my beloved. They'll go by the, by the thousands and by the millions. I saw a meme, and some of you that are on Facebook, you've probably seen it. Amen. And it showed a stadium that Joel Osteen was speaking at in a picture at the top of a page. And it said on, on, that, uh, uh, on the heading above that picture, when a false prophet speaks. And there were thousands and thousands of people in that stadium. And then underneath it showed a picture of a local, a local New Testament church with just a small handful of people there, just like there is this morning, and it said when the truth is preached, and that's about how it is. Now, there's some churches that are preaching the truth this morning, amen, that God has blessed the, the pastor, and he's blessed the congregation, and they have a good number this morning. But I'm here to tell you, my beloved friend, amen, what we see in our midst this morning is the norm in the day and age that we're living in, in Bible-believing churches. There's not many that want it in the day and age that we live, we're living in. But we have to stand against error. We have to stand against heresy. We have to warn people about the false prophets. Peter tells us in 2 Peter 2, 1 and 3, 
He said, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily uh, will bring in damnable heresies. In other words, they're going to bring in heresies, my beloved. Uh, hey Amen. That's not just uh, uh, some little, uh, uh, not, not really matter and difference of opinion, but they're going to bring in heresies uh, that if people believe in, they're going to die lost uh, and go to the devil's hell uh, if they swallow the devil's lie Amen. and swallow yes. that false Amen. doctrine. I want to tell you, honey, it's growing. And it's going in the day and age that we're living in. Well, I want to tell you this morning, my beloved friend, the cults, they're not having problems like, like the real church is. Amen, beloved friend, they're growing. They're, they're growing by leaps and bounds, my beloved. Amen, but, uh, beloved, but uh, you and I need to stand for the truth. Thank God that we can warn those that we can. The vast majority won't hear it. They didn't hear Jesus. Amen. The vast majority. Oh, they came. They came by the multitudes. They came by the thousands. Amen. And thousands and thousands to see the miracles. And my beloved friend. And all like that. When it came down to the end, the vast majority had forsaken him. The crowd was gone. That same crowd as he came into Jerusalem fulfilling the word of God. Amen. Riding on, on a foal of a, 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 a the foal of a donkey. Amen, my beloved friend. And they cried out and said, Hosanna to the king. How that cometh in the name of the Lord. And they took their clothes off and laid it before him. Amen. And took the palms and laid it before him. As he came into Jerusalem triumphantly. A few days later, that same crowd of people cried away with him, crucify him, how we have an old king but Caesar. Well, I want to tell you the word of God said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but they that do the will of my Father which is in heaven. I want to tell you, folks, if People are naming the name of Christ, but they don't believe in the Christ of the Bible. Their faith is a none effect. Amen. The Christ of the Bible is God manifest in flesh. Amen. He was there in the beginning. Amen. When God the Father said, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. So he was there, my beloved friend. Amen. At the Tower of Babel. When God the Father spoke to God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. And said, let us go down and confound their language. I'm here to tell you, he was there. Before the foundation of the earth. God the Father created all things through Jesus Christ. But the, the big cults today, they teach that Jesus was a created being. Well, I want to tell you this morning, He was God manifest in flesh when He walked this earth, but He was God in eternity past before ever the world's were. If they don't believe in the Jesus of the Bible, they cannot be saved. I want to tell you, my beloved friend, salvation is by grace through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen, beloved friend, we are saved by faith, the Bible declares. Amen. Without how the deeds of the law. Anyone believing anything else, my beloved, and trying to get in any other way, they're not going to make it this morning. They're going to die long. And go to the devil's hell. We must put our faith and our trust in the finished work of the cross of Calvary. Else we cannot be saved. Well, I want to tell you, my beloved friend, not one, not one bit of good works is going to do anybody any good. The Bible has declared, amen, that all our righteousness are as filthy rags in His sight. Amen. There's nobody good enough. You can't be good enough. Amen. You can't, my beloved friend, you can't be clean enough. Amen. You can't live right enough. Amen. You can't do anything. Amen. To get you into heaven apart from realizing that Jesus Christ is the only hope that mankind has. 
We must put our faith and our trust in Him. Amen. Paul declared in 1 Corinthians 15, he said, I declare unto you the gospel by which you are saved and wherein you stand. For I delivered unto you that first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, and that He was buried, and that He arose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Amen. He declared in Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10, and He said, The word is nigh thee, even in thy heart and thy mouth. This is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I thank God a couple of verses later he declared whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord amen shall I be saved. Thank God. What a blessing that is. It's the only way you can be saved. And it's not faith plus words. And it's not if you good do's that way you don't. And it's not if you come down to the end of the way and you good outweighs your bad because it won't this morning. You'll be just like old Belteshazzar when that part of the man's hand wrote on the wall and said, many, many, take all you far sand. Oh, listen, my beloved friend, his knees began to smack together. And he called for the wise men. And they came. And he asked them to interpret the writing on the wall. And they could not. And then it was a woman. I think maybe, maybe I, don't, I don't remember now exactly if it was one of his wives or who it was. But a woman stood up and said, there's a man here in, in whom was the spirit of the holy gods. Now she missed it. She put a plural on the end of that. Amen. But she had the right person. Amen. They brought in Daniel. And the king told him, said, I'll give you the half of my, up to the half of my kingdom if you'll tell me what the handwriting on the wall is. Daniel answered and told him, said, Thy reward perished it with thee. He told him, he said, Amen, many, many. He said, Thy, uh, uh, thy kingdom hath uh, been numbered. Uh, amen. And uh, God has finished it. He said, Thou art weighed in the balances uh, and found wanting. Well, I want to tell you, my beloved friend, that night, Cyrus the Persian broke into the city of Babylon and Belteshazzar died. Well, I want to tell you, if you come down to the end of the way hoping that your good deeds are going to outweigh your bad, you're going to be like him. You're going to be weighed in the balances and you're found wanting. For there's none righteous, Paul declared. No, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. There, there's none righteous. Hello, not one. Solomon declared there's not a, good man, a just man upon the earth that doeth good and said it not. How sad that is. Amen. Then I want you to look at verse number 24. I want to move along as quickly as I can. Verse number 24, he tells us here, he said, but none of these things move me. Now, verse number, I'm going to back up in verse, and begin in verse number 22. And he said, and now behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Verse number 24, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Paul said, I'm leaving behind a record that I'm finishing my course with joy. What a blessing that is. Oh, I want to tell you, beloved friend, I want that record. Amen. That I live for God. That I stood for right and I stood for truth. Till the day I die. I want to tell you, I've made this declaration time and time again. Amen. It's not popular in the day and age that we're living in. And uh, my beloved friend, there's many 
that used to stand on it and they got some man in and they stood firm as long as they had a man in the pulpit that stood firm. But there's churches right now, my beloved friend, that for, for generation after generation was staunch, King James only, and would have nothing else, but they got a new man in. And gradually, he turned them away from the King James Bible. And people that stood for years and years and years against the new versions and for the King James, they're, they're turned around and swallowing it now. Amen. And compromising, my beloved friend. I want to tell you, I'm going to preach it till I die. By the help and the grace of God, I'm going to stand on this King James Bible till I die. If there ain't five people that wants to hear it, I'm going to stand on it, my beloved friend, because I know it's the true and genuine Word of God. You know, one of the things that just amazes me, and I, I made a post about this last night, there's churches out there, my beloved friend, that they don't use the King James. But as far as the fundamentals of the faith, they believe everything I do and everything you do. They believe in the blood atonement. They believe in the new birth. And they believe in the virgin birth. They believe, my beloved friend, that you must be born again. They believe, my beloved friend, of amen and the bodily resurrection. And they believe in the second coming of Christ. And all like that. And they won't side with the liberals on that. But when it comes to what Bible they use, they side with the liberals and the modernists and reject the true word of God. I will tell you that's sad. Amen. I will record that I stood true unto the very end, my beloved friend. Amen. Oh, thank God he said I finished my course. And everybody knows, and a lot of you can probably quote, Amen. Thank God, 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8, where Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. Henceforth there is laid up for me in heaven a, a crown of righteousness, a, of which the Lord, the righteous judge, I shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. I want to finish. Amen. The, uh, Paul tells us, he said, we need to run the race with patience. Amen. That's set before us. Amen. They that run in the race, Paul said, I run all but one. I receive of the prize. I run therefore I that you may obtain. I want to tell you, he set us a course to run. And we need to run it. And we need to finish it like we started it. Amen. Thank God we don't need to compromise. And we don't need to give up. But so many, my beloved friend, amen, they'll stand for right, they'll stand for truth, and they'll stand on it. They'll stand for the King James Bible. They'll stand for right, and they'll stand for truth until one of their children or one of their grandchildren backs away. Rather than rebuking that child or that grandchild and standing against them, Amen. They'll back up because they don't want to admit that they're wrong. And they don't want to look at their child or their grandchild and say, you're wrong. But I'm here to tell you, honey, bud, if they are, we need to let them know and we need to tell them. Now, we don't need to be cruel and we don't need to be mean and all like that. But we need to stand for right. And we need to stand for truth. Amen. What a blessing that is. Amen. He finished his course. And again, Hebrews 11 and 5, I quoted it a while ago, by faith, and it was translated that he might not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased the Lord. Amen. That's the greatest testimony that we can leave behind. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's the greatest legacy we can have. And I want to tell you, every, uh, President Biden's worried about it right now. Amen. Obama was worried about it. Amen. But the Bushes were worried about it. Amen. Reagan was worried about it. Amen. And yes, Trump uh, will be worried about it too. 
Amen. Even the way, even though he speaks like he don't, they're always concerned about their legacy. I want to tell you, my beloved friend. Amen. But you know, it don't make any difference either way. Half the country is going to hate them, no matter what. Amen. Roughly about half, because you'll never get this whole country together on one man. Amen. Amen. In agreement again. Hadn't happened since George Washington. It ain't going to happen again. Amen. Well, I want to tell you, beloved, amen, a greater thing than that is leaving behind the legacy that you knew the Lord, and that you served Him, and that you pleased Him, and that you stayed true to Him. Amen. What a blessing that is. He finished His course. Then I want to look at verse number 32, and I'm getting ready to come to a close. Verse number 32, he said, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up. And notice this, and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Amen. He reminded the people that they had an inheritance. Amen. You and I have got an inheritance. Amen. My mama draws way below a thousand dollars a month. She'll not be able to leave much of an inheritance behind for us children. She's got that house over there, my beloved friend. Amen. Up from First Baptist Church, she owes about half of what it's worth. Still owes on it. Still paying payments on it. So she's not going to be able to leave much behind. My dad tried, him and Mike bought a house that they were going to flip and they bought a set of apartments and fixed them up. And my dad was trying to make up for lost time for my mother and us children that he had squandered and wasted down through the years when he wasn't living for the Lord. But the economy turned sour under Obama and they couldn't get along. And things just fell flat. So my dad, dad left this walk of life leaving behind debt. He didn't leave behind any money, not even for mama. Amen, other than what she could add to what she was drawing from his Social Security. That's the only thing he left behind. And bloody friend, like I said, there's probably not going to be much that I'm going to leave behind for my children. But oh, I, want, I want to remind them that thank God as it was left to me, to me by my mother, as it was left to her by her mom and dad, as it was left to them by their mom and dad, and so on on down the line that I have left them a godly heritage, thank God. And they put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, which they have. Amen. Thank God one day after a while they're going to have and inheritance. We may not get much down here, but thanks be unto God, we've got an inheritance over on the other side. Amen. Amen. First Peter 1, 3 through 5, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Thank God he hath given us an inheritance which is incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away. I reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith and the salvation. Amen. Ready to be revealed. In the end time. What a blessing that is. I've got an inheritance, thank God. I'm going to get that city to see that city you were talking about, Cecil. I'm going there one day. I'm guaranteed to be there just as though I already were. What a blessing that is. And again, we quoted to you early, John 14, 1 through 3. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Thanks be unto God. Amen. I want to leave behind 
the testimony to my children and to others. If I leave this walk of life before you do, I cross Jordan's chilly water. Amen. Before you do, just come on over on glory's side. I'll be there. And I'll be waiting for you. Because I know that I know that I know Amen. that I've been redeemed. Amen. I know that I know that I know that the blood of Jesus has washed away my sin. I know that I know that I know how that I've been redeemed. How that I've been made a new creation in Christ. And that I've been given a home and glory one day after a while when I die. And I'm going there. Amen. And all oh, this that I've heard people get up and testify. <coughs> Amen. About the goodness of heaven and the goodness of God then undercut it in their testimony. And they'll get up and they'll say, I'm glad that one day after a while I'm going to go to heaven when I die. And then they'll qualify and they'll say, if I hold out faithful and endure to the bitter end. Honey, I'm not enduring. I'm enjoying. Amen. Thank God you misapplying a scripture that God, amen, applied to, to the tribulation period to the saints of God. We're not enduring, thank God, but we need to enjoy what God has given us. Because, honey, he's given us just a little bit of heaven down here. Amen. While we're here, he gives us joy unspeakable and full of glory. He, and the Bible tells us that the, that the peace of God uh, shall keep your hearts and minds uh, uh, through uh, Christ Jesus. The peace of God that passeth all understanding. Thank God I've got peace. Amen. Amen. I went in last night and, and, uh, and I, I stayed up for a while. I, I, usually, uh, if I can, I stay up until... Uh, Brody gets home. I just I just can't go to bed until he, till he's home. Sometimes I'll doze off on the couch a little bit, cat and ass. But last night we heard him jiggling the key to the door an hour before he's supposed to get come home. They let him off early and he come in. So I got to go to bed a little bit earlier last night. Amen. Of course, Karen shattered my peace this morning, screaming. Amen. Pray for her that the Lord will help her with whatever's going on with her. She had not quit doing that, hadn't done it for about a year, and now she started doing it again. But thank God I laid my head down on my bed, on my pillow last night, in peace, knowing that if I should not wake up in the morning on this side, I was going to wake up in glory, thank God. What a blessing that is. I want to leave a record, don't you? I want to tell you something else. I want the record of Chris Christian. As pastor of this church and the record, my beloved, of Lewis Lane Central Baptist Church, church to be exactly what it has been since the day that it was founded, that it stood for right and that it stood for truth, that it stood on the Word of God. Amen. What a blessing that is. I want to leave behind a record, don't you? Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for the privilege and 